So welcome, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm not Craig Box. Uh, I hope you didn't expect him to come, okay, because he couldn't make it here, but for a good reason. And um, I'm going to present you a research we did together um, about open source security in general uh, and around uh, open source project we well know in uh, the Kubernetes and cloud native security space. And we're going to compare them against the security posture of, of you know, the whole world of other projects. So uh, I don't know if who's been to the key, uh, key note session today, this morning. So Priyanka actually did, uh, did me a favor. Okay, I'm not sure that she knew, but, but when she started to talk about the security posture and the good management of security issues, okay, around open source projects and CNCF projects in general, okay, he actually really did me a favor, okay, because this is one of the things we are going to unwind today and we're going to talk about you know, uh, comparing them one to another based on, on, on our statistics we made at Armo. So just a few words about me. Uh, I'm Ben, um, I'm co-founder and CTO at Armo. Armo is a Kubernetes security company. Uh, we are the creators of Kubescape. Kubescape, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit on later for those who don't know, but we are working in general, okay, we are working in the Kubernetes uh, security posture world, okay? In my previous uh, um, um, jobs, okay, I used to work in offensive security and also in this defensive security for a long time. So um, let's just jump in to the presentation. Okay, so uh, Kubescape, um, which I'm one of the maintainers of, okay, is is a, a Kubernetes security posture tool which tells you, okay, about misconfigurations in, inside your cluster, how you can improve your security inside your cluster. And it's both a CLI tool and it's both a, a, a operator which you can use in different ways. Um, and it also scans your containers inside the Kubernetes cluster and can tell what kind of vulnerabilities your containers have. And uh, it does the same also in your uh, what we call the shift left, the, the left side of the world, okay, when you are preparing uh, your Kubernetes deployments, okay, in your GitHub repo, in your VS code, and so on, and can scan your GitHub repositories and container registries to find out things uh, about uh, your security postures. There's also a very important thing here to note, okay, that one of the most important uh, uh, goals of the project is not just to, you know, like, dump the data on you and have you like uh, uh, trying to work out what, how to solve these issues, but also to prioritize and show you how to fix these issues. Uh, Armo is providing a platform, okay, behind Kubescape in order to store the data, okay, of, of the results of these scans and help you analyze them even further uh, and gives you a big, uh, bigger perspective, okay, around these issues. Now, what it makes us, okay, it creates us uh, ability, okay, to look into this data, okay? And this is what you're going to analyze today together. Okay, we have a lot of data and we wanted to like co uh, create a, a, a comparison a between projects of the world, okay, and, and the general population. And in our very specific case, the population, okay, of graduated projects inside CNCF and see how they are fair one against the other. So there are two data sources we are going to talk about today. In the Armo platform, we are receiving data from Kubescapes for, as I told you before, security issues, configuration issues around Kubernetes objects, and, uh, and vulnerabilities from image scans. Okay, the image scans can come either from uh, container registries or the Kubernetes uh, cluster itself. And security issues can also come both from Git repos and Kubernetes clusters as well, but uh, we are today going to focus on data, what we are getting, okay, from, uh, uh, from Git repositories and container registries. Now, about the data set we are going to talk. So, we've seen container images, okay, from nearly 180 registries. We've scanned 44, around nearly 44,000 container images. We've seen nearly 2,000 uh, uh, 2, Git repositories, 
And we, inside those Git repositories, we have scanned YAML files and Helm charts in the size of nearly 164,000 uh, uh, files. Okay, so it's, a, it, it's not a small data set, but it can bring us some really interesting things. So the first time, well, we are going to look into image vulnerability scans. So we're going to, come, as I told you, we're going to compare two samples again, one uh, to the other. The first sample is the general population. The second sample is the, uh, uh, is the sample of graduated projects. Okay, we are going to look at the distribution of severities. Okay, how, how, uh, if we have vulnerability, how severe they are. We are going to look at what are the most common vulnerabilities in both samples. And we are going to dive into these, uh, the relevan relevancy of these vulnerabilities. So, if we're looking at what were the most prevalent uh, um, image, um, image repositories, okay? We are going, in the general sample, we are going to see that even the first one of the image, image repositories is already a Kuber, uh, net, uh, CNCF graduated project, okay, Argo CD, which, was the mo uh, which gave us the most image scans, okay, nearly 20,000. You can see that the second is Redis, okay, uh, we all know, it, it, although it's an open source project, it is not under the CNCF umbrella. Okay, the, th uh, the third one is also belong to Argo, okay, the same project. Then you have Prometheus, okay, which is also a, a graduated project. Then you have a very interesting project, okay, also open source, okay, it has Sidecar uh, from uh, Kaivi Grid, uh, which is, again, a, an open source project, not under the CNCF umbrella, but it's also, we saw it in, in a lot of clusters. Uh, it, uh, in general, it is, a, uh, um, it is a tool for those who don't know it. It's a tool to update uh, config maps during the runtime, okay, uh, uh, of a container, update them uh, inside the containers, okay, who are using that config map. So again, Prometheus, we saw of MongoDBs, uh, again, Prometheus, and the Datadog agent. Sorry. So among the graduated sample, okay, the top repository is obviously Argo CD and Prometheus we already saw, okay, in the general sample because they were also very high up on, in the general sample itself. Uh, we can see also QProxy and uh, CubeState Matrix Exporter, okay, as part of the top uh, uh, images we've seen in the general sample. Obviously, the general sample has much more images which are unrelated, okay, to, uh, um, to open source. Uh, and in the, within the graduated samples, okay, th this is the setup, okay? And after, it, uh, after the first 10, uh, 10 images, okay, you can see another uh, co uh, core images of, of Kubernetes itself. So the first thing we've compared is um, the distribution of severities. So, the first one, okay, the, in this chart, you can see that it is ordered by the general sample and the prevalence and distribution of, of the severities inside the general sample. So you can see that the most, okay, uh, uh, um, vulnerabilities were medium in the general sample. And, uh, and in the second was what we call negligible. So it might, you know, confuse you, okay, because there are, um, not every cont uh, image scanner uses this severity, okay? Um, but we are, Cubescape is using Gripe, okay? And Gripe differentiates between low and negligible severities. Negligible is from zero to two uh, uh, in the CVSS score, and two to four is low, okay? There are a lot of scanners who are like uh, uh, marking everything from zero to four as low uh, severity, but for, our cell, uh, but for ourselves, I think it's more uh, interesting to look also in for, uh, on the scale of, of uh, zero to two. And we already can see that for, uh, for graduated projects, okay, the most common uh, vulner uh, vulnerability severity is negligible. So it's a very low, m most of the uh, vulnerabilities are, are negligible and, and the lowest priorities, severities, sorry. Okay, um, 
you can see also that um, that in the common general sample, okay, after it you have the third most common is high vulnerabilities. And in the graduated projects, there is here something interesting. So in graduated projects, you have nearly as much high vulnerabilities as medium vulnerability uh, uh, vulnerabilities. And if we are looking at the low bar, at the low severities, we can see that in the graduated projects, it is quite few and the general sample is above that. Okay, if we're looking at the critical, okay, the critical is nearly head to head in the both samples. And last but not least, okay, the others, uh, severities are belonging to those who are, uh, those vulnerabilities who haven't yet been scored and therefore they are just like not categorized yet, okay, in the time of, of when they were scanned. But this can show you a can, uh, already a difference in the distribution, okay? But it doesn't really, honestly, it, it didn't really make us, you know, a lot of sense, okay, yet. So what we did, okay, we started to look at the top vulnerabilities in the general sample. And we looked at the CVs, and these are the top 10 CVs in the general sample. You can see that there is one vulnerability which is outstanding, is relatively new vulnerability in BusyBox, which, which was in nearly 37,000 uh, images we've scanned, okay? And it's a high severity vulnerability in BusyBox. Then we saw another, okay, in LibGcrypt, which was like uh, nearly uh, 15,000 high. And uh, then you can see a few which are like also in uh, around these 15,000 uh, 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 scans. And at the end, from eight and down, you have less. Now, we started to look e into each of these vulnerabilities because it was really, really hard, again, to make sense, okay, to, to understand something better, okay, uh, 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 something more interesting take out of, of this data. So we started to manually go through these vulnerabilities. Now, this is the uh, time when, you know, my experience <laughs> kicked in in the sense that I really used to look into these vulnerabilities and reported a few CVs myself. So looking into this, what, how they are making sense around our world, around the, around the cloud native world. So uh, I took, you know, the CV, uh, first CV from the list and started to look at it, okay? I don't know how are you in reading CVSS vectors, uh, but I can't, uh, if you are not reading it that well, so I can tell you that, that this is a, a, net, a vulnerability which can be exploited through network connections and relatively have a big impact, okay, factor, because it can, you know, it can cause a takeover of the client process. Now I started to read this description and start to read a little bit more about the, this vulnerability. So it's a busy box vulnerability. Busy box is, I don't know if you know what busy box is, yeah. So BusyBox, uh, um, in BusyBox, if you're using NetStat, okay, to read DNS records, okay, an attacker with a malcrafted uh, 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 DNS record can take over your VT compliant terminal, okay? And alternatively, the attacker also can change the colors of your terminal. So, it, so I have to say it was really funny to read this, this, <laughs> this, this description, okay, because you know, I don't want to go there. We don't have enough time, but it was very funny. Uh, so I've been around, okay, Lin Linux, okay, and, and all these network tools for a long time, even more longer than I want to admit. Okay, I've never used NetStat, okay, to read DNS records. I don't know if there is anyone here, here who did that. But in general, okay, the attacker, if he wants to exploit this, he needs to access, be able to poison your DNS servers, okay, your DNS record, and have to uh, cause you to read, use NetStat to read that DNS record, okay, into a terminal, and in order to really exploit, uh, to create the exploit, the thing which, which is going to be taken over is actually the terminal process, which doesn't belong to your container, okay? Having what it means, in general, if I want to understand what does it mean for a cloud native application? This thing, as a security expert, okay, I will say that well, the, my ability to exploit this issue is very, very low, okay? So let's go to the next one. Um, LibCrypt. 
Um, Libcrypt, okay, in uh, in very uh, in uh, specific versions, okay, mishandles uh, um, a cryptographic algorithm, a, sym uh, uh, a symmetric cryptographic algorithm called El Jamal, okay, and it enables okay the attacker from a side channel, okay, to extract the uh, the private key, okay, which is actually a serious problem, okay. The point is that the reason why this is so prevalent and so up in our list, in our top 10 list, because it is part of the GPG protocol. Where do we use GPG protocol? Anyone recalls? GPG protocol is used in our package managers. So if we are downloading, uh, installing packages, okay, their signatures are verified with GPG. Are they verified with private keys? No. Packages are validated with public keys. When I'm signing packages, okay, then I use a, a, a private key. The, the very, you know, small percent of container images which contain private key, are, which is like a, a very bad thing to, uh, to have a private key inside your container, okay, uh, is very small. And the reason why you are get, this is so prevalent because the package managers you are having in your base images. And this thing, the most uh, in 99.999% of the container uh, applications, this thing is not running inside your Kubernetes cluster, okay? But you still have it in, your, in, in our top 10. So let's go to something else. SQLite. SQLite, when everyone knows SQLite, right? There is, there is, there was, okay, a vulnerability in SQLite, actually a critical vulnerability which enabled, uh, if someone, if an attacker could craft an S, a very specific SQL uh, query, he could take over the SQL, the process which runs SQLite, okay, with this crafted query, okay, uh, which is a real serious thing, but if you think about uh, it again, in order to exploit it, the, the attacker needed to have an SQL injection beforehand, right? Because the way from outside the attacker is coming into your workload is, to inject a, a SQL query takes, you know, a way that it has to access and inject this query. So again, it is really, okay, it is not really simple because oh, you already have, a, have an SQL injection problem beforehand. And if you are, again, looking at why this is so up in our list, this is so up in our list because there in, in, uh, in SQLite is part of all the CentOS and Red Hat images by default, okay? I don't remember why, maybe it's again the package manager, I don't know, okay, but, but, but it, the fact is it's there. No, no one says that it actually runs in your cloud native application. So again, this is something it's really hard to see how it's going to be exploited if you're looking at. So I went through, okay, all the top 10 images and like I had this, made up this really bad, okay, opinion, but it's uh, like it's trying to make here a point that I only seen two of them, which I can see of the top 10, which can be in some case relevant for cloud native applications. All the others are really hard for me to see how they can exploit it, okay? And again, this is not, I'm not completely like true here, okay? But I'm trying to make a point that it, most of these things are really, really hard to see how they are exploited, even if at all. And only see here two, one is which is Zlib, uh, uh, a vulnerability which I saw that there are, I think, Node.js uh, uh, implementations, HTTP service, uh, server implementations, where they are using Zlib with this vulnerability and actually can be exploited in, in very rare cases. And also in uh, libstn, with ASTN, which is uh, for SSL. Again, not easy to exploit, narrowly long, but at least they have some, you know, some percent of them or can be exploited. So I looked at also the, the 10 most vulnerable, uh, uh, most vulnerabilities, problem vulnerabilities in the graduated project sample. And what I saw here, okay, um, I saw here one which was really, really outstanding, okay, is an issue with protobuf library, which is a vulnerability which goes, dates back to 2015, which was like a high vulnerability, which is around for a long time. And was really, I was really curious about it. And I saw here Golang issues and Prometheus issues, which is again, makes sense, okay, because Prometheus is one of the most common 
uh, 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 images we've used to scan and also Argo. And so on, at the end of the list, you can also see, okay, the same libgcrypt and SQLite issues we had before. So I returned to this vulnerability, okay, of protobuf, okay, which made me think it's really strange that in the graduated projects you have a, a, a high vulnerability for, which is so old. And after a while I started to look at it, so it's a real issue. And after a while it turned out that actually there is a bug open on, uh, on, uh, on uh, gripe, okay? And it turns out that actually Gripe misinterprets the Go length implementation of protobuf, and it thinks that it's the same as the lib, uh, as the C implementation, and the vulnerability actually is ex uh, only exists inside uh, the C implementation and not in the Go implementation. In other words, okay, this is a is, is simply is a bad entry, okay, and the scanner creates here uh, uh, a false positive, okay, so. This wasn't an issue, but in general, I, may, I went through the same list and, uh, and looked at. Also, I found okay that only uh, from my point of view, five uh, uh, of these are can be uh, vulnerabilities that can not be in some circumstances exploited uh, uh, in uh, in our world. So then I looked at okay, what are the stats of of uh, per image vulnerabilities? So if I'm taking a random image inside the sample, okay. Uh, what are the uh, um, potential okay, of number of, of vulnerabilities okay, in each category? Okay, and you can see that in, in the critical vulnerabilities around, you know, nearly, I think it was like seven to eight uh, uh, critical vulnerabilities in the, uh, in the general sample. Okay, uh, sorry, there is a, something bad in, I just noticed that in the colors are, were swapped here. So the black, is the general sample, okay, the blue is uh, uh, the graduated project, okay? So the legend is, is wrong and have to uh, be fixed. Um, so as you can see, it, this is something very, very uh, complementing to, to the graduated projects, okay? Because if you are taking any random image, okay, from our sample, it most likely have so much more vulnerabilities than the graduated projects, okay? And it's also the same for what you've seen this morning in Priyanka's uh, 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 keynote. So I thought, well, okay, this is very, very nice, okay, because we are doing an awesome job in, in CNCF, okay, but then it ma made me think, okay, well, what's happening here, because this can be so good, okay, and it's returned to, to, to the same thing we already started to talk about, okay, that a vulnerability image scanner returns is not something that an actually an exploitable security issue, always. Okay, and, and then I started to, decided to look into, we have at, at Cubescape, we have a, a, a working progress project, okay, called Sniffer, which enables you to, uh, uh, to use eBPF to understand which software packages are loaded into the memory in the container, and using, okay, this information, what we can do is we can filter out the SBOM, okay, uh, of the container image, and only create an SBOM which only shows you the, uh, the pa software packages which are actually inside your container running, okay? And using this filter SBOM, you can feed the vulnerability scanner and get the result. Now, the interesting thing, I'm just returning for here a minute, okay, you can see here an NGNX uh, uh, container, okay, the image vulnerability scanner return near uh, nearly 400 vulnerabilities, but only four of them are in the memory, which is like amazing, okay? Um, and now I took, again, all the st top 10 vulnerabilities and now recalculated the images, okay, with this, uh, with this relevancy. And what I saw, okay, that actually still graduated projects are much better, okay, in the general sense, but the difference is not so big, okay? So if we had like this 10 to one like general number beforehand, we can see that, that if we are looking at general sample after we filtered out all these packages which are not really running inside the containers, we can see the difference is not so big, okay? So you just focus on the critical and high vulnerabilities, you will see that there is no big difference between the number of the, uh, uh, of the vulnerabilities, which kind of, again, uh, uh, made us, okay, think that, well, still, graduated projects are doing much better, okay, 
but, the, but this, they are not so far as we thought before. Now, why, are this, why this is happening, okay? And, and I think it's an interesting uh, uh, discussion, okay? Um, and we could, like engineers among ourselves, we could you know, talk a lot about this. But in general, okay, um, I think that one of the reasons, okay, that in, in the graduated projects, in general, the CNCF projects has much less vulnerabilities, okay, because there we are using newer technologies. These are most of our projects are are not are already created for this ecosystem, and they are using Go, okay. They are uh, they are uh, um, uh, usually built upon uh, uh, upon base images which are which are empty, okay, and not like you know base images of of, of uh, different Linux distributions which are bringing in their own vulnerabilities even before you've added your own file. Uh, inside them, so actually newer technologies are, 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 are I think, one of the you know a, a big uh, a, have a big effect on uh, in general, okay, in these numbers. And also, if we are looking, okay, the way we are managing things at, at CNCF and these projects, I think the transparency and the, uh, is very uh, um, have a big effect on, on solving issues really fast. And I think there is a really good, you know, we, we can see that it, it, it has a big effect in general. So um, about scanning configurations, okay, configurations of, of, of Kubernetes objects. So again, what we are going to do is, is comparing these two samples, okay, of repositories, repositories of, of graduated projects and repositories of the general population. Okay, uh, we are going to look at what kind of issues we are seeing in both uh, uh, samples, okay, and what are the most prevalent uh, uh, issues, and then we are going to see, okay, how these issues are affecting, okay, uh, in general, these populations. So, uh, Cubescape uses this concept of controls, uh, which are actually, think about them as tests, okay, of different properties of objects. So if, li if you like, you have, uh, let's take it for, uh, whether you are using an immutable file system in your Kubernetes workload is one test, okay? We are checking, okay, the, the security context where you have this property. And you can see that the most failed control among the general population, okay, was this immutable file system. So we've seen a lot, lot of workloads which didn't use immutable file system. So it it's kind of makes sense in a way that immutable file system is not easy. It, it takes time to configure it, okay? And, and although it is very good from a security perspective, uh, I wouldn't say that it is the most important, have the most effect on it. So it kind of makes sense that it's among the fir uh, first things. It was quite uh, uh, surprising that, that we've seen, as you can see, the second uh, uh, one was resource limits. There are a lot of uh, workloads which doesn't have resource limits uh, in our sample. We have a lot of who are, who are running as root containers. Therefore, they are failing the control of non-root containers. And also around the same of numbers are allowing privilege escalations inside, okay, uh, uh, air containers. And also after it, you can see that not, a lot of not configuring memory limits, resource limits, um, Common labor usage, which I don't think it's a security issue, but in general I can see uh, that why it is a point has a point. And I saw after it that we had a lot of CIS compliance issues down at the end of of the sample. Now, it was quite interesting because I didn't understand at the beginning. Okay, when I looked at the uh, sample, why we have so few security context. Uh, as opposed to uh, root file system and so on, because I would expect that more people are are not configuring their security context than, for example, putting the resource limits. And then I, the, since I'm looking at the, uh, uh, at the sample of the last three months and Cubescape only released CIS compliance only a month and a half ago, at the end I understood that actually this wasn't, uh, you know, the, the reason for it that they are at the end of the list is because actually the sample is tainted in this direction. So I'm a graduated project. It was very, 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 uh, uh, surprising to see that that the most common issue was that resource limits are not configured, um, and after it, okay, uh, uh, readiness probes and immutable file systems a little bit later on memory limits were missing, non-root containers, which is already showing that non-root containers they're 
more configured in, in, in uh, graduated projects and privilege escalations are more configured, uh, but a lot of them, again, miss, uh, were missing things like readiness and uh, probes and resource uh, limits, which was like, you know, again, kind of strange, but as it turns out, th this is how it, uh, how it goes. But in general, okay, we've seen that there is this distribution, which is a little bit different, okay, but, but we have a lot of issues. Now, we try, uh, try to compare, okay, if we, are, we take a general, uh, 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 if randomly we take uh, uh, any workload in, from both samples, okay, what are the number of controls, how, what's the percent of, the control, of all our controls which are, would fail on, uh, on, 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 on a randomly picked, randomly picked workload? Okay, and it turned out that 35% of, of our controls would fail if we pick a random, uh, uh, random workload in the graduated project and 38 in the general sample. And from my point of view, I can say that it's real clear that they are very, these numbers are really close, okay, one to each other. So I can say that there is no, much, no big difference, okay? So as we could, we saw that in the image vulnerabilities, we saw a big difference between the two samples, okay, of vulnerability distribution and number of vulnerabilities inside the image. In case of, of, of the way uh, that, uh, that the workloads are configured, we can see that they're, it's still better, okay, the graduated sample, but not by far, okay, by a little. So if we are uh, wrapping up, okay, uh, this presentation, um, it is really okay, it is really hard, if, if I'm getting back to the vulnerability discussion, okay, it's really hard, I mean, even though I presented you numbers which are showing you this direction, it's really hard to say that, that uh, uh, graduated projects are less exploitable, okay, definitely, okay, because the very reason, because I'm, I, and I sharing you with this, uh, with YouTube and, you know, this small number of people we are having here, my, opinion that it is vulnerability scans are really bad today. They are not really representing real exploitability, okay? And therefore, all these numbers are, even if I'm taking into account the, the sniffer results, which showed, you know, filtered out a lot of issues which cannot be exploited definitely, all, with all the vulnerabilities I've stayed with, I didn't have any real number about how, whether they can be exploited in a real life workload. Uh, without going to one of them, uh, to each of them, and start to uh, check it. So I cannot state for sure, okay, that the graduated projects are, are less vulnerable, but, I can, but there is a good hunch that they are less, okay, vulnerable. And, uh, um, and I think that, you know, we have to work, in, in general, okay, we have to work a lot of, of, of uh, vulnerability scanning to make it much better, okay, and much useful for us. Uh, in the misconfiguration side, uh, uh, okay, again, which I already told you, I think that graduated projects has a slight lead, okay, on that. But again, this is not a big, you know, big difference. And I think that one of the, this research we are still doing, uh, one of the things made us to think that how we can, we could generate a, a pull request to graduated projects and in general, okay, open source projects to send them, you know, fixes uh, automatically in GitHub. And, you know, we are looking for contributors in the Cubescape projects for those who, who want to join uh, this effort. Um, yeah, and uh, this was my talk, okay? I'll rate it, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I'm going to, in, in half an hour, I'm going to talk in the next room from here about uh, prioritization of workloads and how scan of, uh, of, uh, of Prioritization of scan results can help you to solve big issues. Thank you very much.